And in some of these cases, there's work that we did at the kernel level, there's work that we did at a driver level, and there's work that Intel did in their own software to make specifically the combination of Windows and the Intel platforms work better together. It, I can't think of a single other partner that has the same breadth um, of engineering engagements with Microsoft as Intel, whether it's around um, processors or graphics or storage, whether it's about networking that's wired or wireless, whether it's about biometrics or security or um, system level software. Intel has the broadest range of um, on-site engineers at Microsoft and we have the biggest PC ecosystem team that we've ever had in Windows working together. We've been doing this you know, from the beginning of Windows 7. So um, we'd like to kind of talk about how those investments that we both made, the investment in changes in our engineering system, the investment in a PC ecosystem team working together with the on-site engineers and the engineers at Intel headquarters brought some of these um, projects together. So alignment in these areas is great. Um, our overall engineering story together I think is going to be pretty exciting because we're going to release high quality products together on time, which is what customers want. We've also made some changes in Windows 7 to have the broadest range of choice available when we launch on day one. So if we think back to that um, WinHack demo where I stood up on stage and showed an Intel Core i7 machine, which by the way was such an amazingly cool gaming machine that that's what I bought for myself at home with my own money when it was time to go buy a gaming rig, or held up that first netbook um, that was running Windows 7. The range of systems that Windows can run on um, at GA is wider than it's ever been. This is the first time that Windows hasn't doubled its system requirements release over release since the beginning of Windows. So every single time we shipped Windows, it took twice of everything, twice as many floppies and memory and CPU. And this is a time where we understood that it was more important to work together to make sure that we had a really wide range, whether it was a netbook that would be affordable in an emerging market or a 256 processor server running in the data center. We wanted Windows to work really well across Intel's entire platform line. So that, that was our goal and our plan. These are four areas where we've done specific work together. And I think what makes the most sense for you is to see it in action. So almost all of these systems are running Windows 7 RTM code, um, and we'll indicate uh, that as we're going along. And what you'll see are our actual performance improvements being measured live for you here, um, as well as some of the new features um, and scenarios. So with that, I'd like to introduce Rustin Panabaker. Rustin's an engineer um, on my team at Microsoft who has been doing a lot of the um, Intel Microsoft co-engineering work. So Rustin. Excellent. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Steve. Self chair for a moment now. So um, I, I get to kick things off um, drilling into some of these areas, and we're going to start with power management. And I think power management is a really good one to start with because it, it illustrates the, the tight partnership that we had. Um, when, we, when we started Windows 7, our teams you know, realized that power management wasn't something where we could like think in silos and just look at processor power management or device power management, we really need to look at it from a system level. And really, Intel is the obvious partner to go deep on, on this sort of thing with because, as Mike mentioned, of the breadth of our engagement, you know, graphics, networking, storage, um, I.O. interfaces, CPU, all of those things are needed to really achieve energy efficiency and to get to result in better battery life for the end user. So. I'm going to talk about a, a number of features in Windows 7 and a number of the things that um, we, and how we collaborated essentially with Intel on power management. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is um, give you a very specific example of, of a workload, a real world workload, um, where we work together and really optimize the system to be um, energy efficient. And our focus during Windows 7 was on real world experiences and scenarios because at the end of the day we wanted to make sure that the things real end users were doing was where we were investing our effort and iterating on, on creating better systems. So the example I'm going to give is DVD, uh, DVD playback. Okay, So many of us in this room have probably sat on a plane and um, experienced this exact scenario. And what I have here is on um, your left um, a Windows Vista SP1 system running on uh, Lenovo T400, just installed Vista SP1. 
Um, on the system on the right, I have a Lenovo, the exact same hardware, Lenovo T400, running um, the Windows 7 RTM code that will launch on October 22nd. And these systems are running on battery right now. And I have um, a little application we've created which monitors the battery in real time to, to, to calculate the drain of the battery, which allows us to calculate power. And what you can, can see in this sam uh, demo is that the average time since I started this, when you all walked in the room, the average power drain on the Windows 7 system is 15.63 watts. And the average power drain on the Windows Vista system is 20.48. OK? And um, this system is actually, as you can see, doing really well, actually. Um, the estimated time left for Windows Vista on your plane ride over to Paris is 4.14 hours, so about 4 hours and 15 minutes. And on, over on the Windows 7 system, we're up at 5.47, so 5.5. Sorry for the decimals. So 5.5 hours. So, you know, your mileage varies based on system configuration and, and some of the, the decisions that are made around components and, and platforms that are chosen. But you can see here that with modern Intel platform running Windows 7, we're achieving, you know, a very significant amount of battery savings. So how do we actually do that, right? So what, what actually uh, occurs? Well. There, there's multiple levels of how we work together. The, the first thing we did is focused on, um, you actually can see out in the hallway, you can see the, an example of a couple of the setups of the actual instrumented systems. Intel provided Microsoft with instrumented Montevina and, uh, and other Intel platforms, which we actually have wires sticking out of and we can connect them all up to our tools. And as we're running workloads against those, we can you know, get all of the actual power drain from buses, from um, the, the CPU, the active power, the VCC power, um, from the power supply, from the DVD drive, from memory. And Intel having those systems in their labs and us having those systems in the labs allowed us to collaborate, build over build in an iterative fashion. And I'll show you how we were able to tweak policies to really optimize the system. And when we optimize the system, you know, one of the really important workloads was idle, right? When the system's sitting idle, or when the user's typing away, there's actually a lot of period, there's a lot of time in that when the user's using a PC where the system is idle. And the nice thing about idle is that it really is a, an expression of the efficiency of the hardware and the OS. Ig ignore the application that's running, ignore the active workload of hardware, it gives us this baseline efficiency of the platform. And then on top of idle, we start to add real-world scenarios. So Intel would go off and test the real-world scenarios. The Microsoft engineers would measure the real-world scenarios. We could get together and actually compare notes and um, dig into issues that were found, look for uh, regressions, build to build. And it was that iterative process. And I might also mention telemetry during beta and RC, where we got real-world telemetry back on the decisions we made that we were able to, to do some of the things I'm going to show you. So the next thing, the next example um, I'll, I'll drill into in terms of how we actually, some of the advancements we made, timer coalescing is an, a good example of this. So in the Windows 7 kernel, we have um, timers that are set that essentially wake the processor up out of sleep states. So we want to keep the processor down in deep sleep states. So for example, the, the new Intel products have, have a C6 deep power down state, which uses very little power. But we have to wake the system back up to get work done in the processor and then try to get it back down into a sleep state. Well, one of the things we learned in analyzing was that in, in previous OSs, all the threads in the system were setting timers. And, and these timers were firing at all different times. And it created a situation where we couldn't keep the processor down in these deep power states. In Windows 7, we've added new APIs, which as you can see from the animation, these APIs essentially allow the threads in the system to give tolerances as to when they need ticks, when they need to be woken up to do active work. And the result is, is we can align all of those pieces of work so that we can keep the processor down in idle and deep power down C6 state, and then we can wake the processor up, do, do a bunch of active work from multiple threads and get back down into these deep power states that Intel's created. And you know, this sort of innovation in the OS results in a scenario where during DVD playback, for example, the processor can do active work, get down into a sleep state for some number of milliseconds, be saving power, wake up, do what's needed for the scenario, and get back down. And I'll, be, I'll drill in and show you some how that actually manifested. 